A count speed, B count speed, C count speed, sound speed. Brother Kitten is actually what this, that logo is right there, and right there again and pressing your reality. And actually this jacket right here is a Brother Kitten jacket, BK for Brother Kitten. Logos inside the line and, and everything, actually showing a little bit of the mic. Actually not using a shotgun mic this time. I just did it out of habit. I actually just clip myself doing a live this time. Anyways, that is not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is, once again, Brother Kitten was a show that some of you are aware of, some of you are not aware of. Not gonna get into the details what the show was or whatnot, but point is, show is being repurposed into a podcast along with these videos I've been doing. So I was originally, these videos were meant to help me get better with talking on camera to other people because I recognize as a person who interviews folks, which is something I never planned to be, in, but fell in love with doing docu-series projects, started interviewing people, realized quickly I needed to get better at that. So I started shooting these videos to practice getting better talking with people because having three cameras to feed off of, basically having no one to feed off of while you're talking to three cameras is pretty difficult for me to do. So I was like, hey, let me practice doing this. And I pretty much has done all I could do with these videos. And so now it's time for me to interview people again. I was mainly thinking LA Year One, which we are back doing. Just dropped the first episode of LA Year One this week. And every week, one episode will be dropping. We've been shooting these all along and stuff. Again, not the purpose of this video. Actually, a little bit. Did want to tell people about what's going on with LA Year One. We have people scheduled. And there are some people I've already talked to about LA Year One who's coming in to do the show and some other people I will be reaching out soon to. But once again, going back to Brother Kitten. Yes, so with these videos that I have been putting out, first off, thank you all for y'all tremendous support when it comes to these. I was gonna do away with them, but then I thought, no, what's smarter is putting these in front of the Brother Kitten podcast and having it kind of, having it acting as a introduction to the episode. Now, what Brother Kitten podcast is, I really just wanted a place where I can sit down people I find interesting and talk about certain topics, not really things that are current event. I've never really been into talking about current event things, but I wanted to talk to people about fitness, technology, music, film, aliens, how the real aliens are, are, are actually in the ocean. They're there. Um, weird things, question your reality kind of subjects. What I've noticed at times with LA Year One, which some of you are aware of, I will veer off into other subjects that are not really about a person's first year. And so I was like, hey, let me just create a whole separate show and to talk about those things that, I don't know, just had a burning desire to talk about that I didn't quite see out there. And so I'm a person that's like, hey, if I don't see it out there, then fuck it, I just go shoot it myself. And I already had the fucking artwork for Brother Kitten. So I was like, all right, just name it Brother Kitten. I'm actually just going to attach this on the first episode of Brother Kitten, which is I brought, it, I brought in a young man named Jeremy. Jeremy is a personal trainer and an online fitness trainer. He also does bodybuilding. Really fascinating young fella, only 20 years old, got into it during the pandemic and has pretty much dedicated his life towards that since. Him and I, we had a very fascinating conversation about working out the do's, the don'ts, and we had a lot of fun talking about certain things. A few things I wanted to talk about, about our conversation that I have implied into my own workout regimen since is, I didn't realize I wasn't getting enough protein. I shocked him when I said I was probably averaging around 80 grams of protein, which turns out is not the proper amount for somebody my size and who works out like me. And I told him during that interview that I stopped doing certain ab workouts because my abdomen kept cramping up. And so I thought that I pulled something, but it turns out I was just cramping up and I was at a party and I was experiencing these cramps in my abdomen. And somebody said, so simple. I figure I know this, know this. They said, 
maybe you're not getting enough electrolytes. And that turns out to be the problem that I have been facing for months. I just was not getting enough electrolytes. Since then, been drinking the proper amount of electrolytes and all my cramps went away. Jeremy told me he meditates for 30 minutes every day, trying to get up to an hour. I was inspired by that because I was up, I was doing 15 minutes a day. Now I'm doing between 21, 28 minutes, sometimes 32 minutes, but something like that. And so I say that to say, you can get so, you can just, from a simple conversation, you can get so inspired by somebody or you will pick up things. One thing I did want to address that I meant to push back on Jeremy when we talked, and we talked about the sauna. And he said that he didn't do the sauna. And he, we talked a little bit about the health benefits, but I highly recommend people look into the health benefits of the sauna because it's, we talked a little bit about, um, I was great for recovery, right? But what we didn't talk about is I was good for your heart. And there's many other health benefits when it comes to the sauna. And as you get older, you should be hitting the sauna more and more. I wouldn't say more and more, but it's good to do it at least, what is it, they say 53 minutes a week. I'll probably provide a link in this. I don't know if I will or not, but who knows. But anyway, so without, I was going to say without further ado, I'm not going to say that shit. But anyways. For Instagram and Facebook, I'm going to attach a scissor reel to this. And so it's going to be this opening video, and there's a scissor reel to the down podcast. And then on YouTube, it's going to be the full video with this as an opening kind of thing. So, yeah. When I was young, I always wanted to be, like, physically fit because I wanted – it might sound a little embarrassing, but uh, I wanted to attract more girls in my life. At All the right. time, I was like 14 years old. That's the thing that kind of like helps start every mo man's motivation to anything ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know anyone else that has a better motivation than that. All right. So I wanted to get bigger. I wanted to get stronger so I can, you know, attract the opposite sex pretty much. And it's just like I tried everything. I tried keto. I tried uh, vegetarian, vegan. And I wanted just to get the abs. I didn't want the muscles at the time. Because I was like, I looked at Arnold Schwarzenegger, I seen all the girls that he had on his uh, arms and his legs. I'm like, I want to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I trained really hard and nothing happened. I'll like go in there for like a few months and then come right out. And then when COVID happened, I was like, okay, let me lock in. Let me lock in. So, so wait, you haven't even been serious since COVID? I've been only serious since COVID. Oh, wow. So that's put you at uh, 2020. Mm-hmm. Got you. So what, we're in 2024, so... Approaching four years. Mm hmm Got you, got you. All right. And it was just like, I got serious, locked in, did a shit ton of cardio. I did like, the only thing I trained was chest and my arms and maybe a little bit of shoulders. I never did my back, never did my legs. So my chest and up was like, I was like really big. But if you look me in the back, it was like a rectangle, like no <laughs> definition. I never took a picture of my legs or nothing like that. I got like super ripped and I was just like, holy shit, I look good, right? Wait. How were you working out? So I worked out in my bedroom, just had like a pair of dumbbells and just bench press on the floor. Yeah. Showed a uh, bicep curl and that's it. <laughs> Prison workouts. <laughs> Prison. <laughs> uh, I didn't even do push ups. That's the funny thing, too. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's funny, it's like a lot of people, when they're getting into it, because the science changes so much. Not even to say the science changes, but but the science does change a lot mm -hmm. that I find. But also, people are just taught wrong. Oof. So, who was teaching you how to do certain things? Like, where were you getting your information from? So, when it was like 2020, fitness wasn't really that big. It was like, um, like before the before the pandemic, it wasn't really that big. So, I had sources like Buff Dudes. Athlean X. I had like all the good sources. But yeah, Jeff Cavalier of Athlean X, which is a pe person I constantly point people towards. He's big about legs. Mm, oh. <laughs> so how did you skip that portion of it all? Well, you know, I didn't like training legs. I uh, didn't like training legs. I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was a pussy at the time. I didn't want to trade up. I hate the term pussy. Oh, it's in my bag. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You can use it. No, no, no. So, okay. So I once wrote about this. I was just, I said, uh, pussy and balls, the great American mix up. Mm. Like, let's think about this for a bit. Like, pussy gives birth, 
-hmm. itself clean. Mm -hmm. It has so many, what is it? I forget how many thousands of nerves to it that it has, right? Mm -hmm. A clitoris has. Balls. Mm -hmm. You flick it, it goes down. Mm -hmm. Ain't much, ain't too many nerves there. And they damn sure ain't self clean. Mm -mm. <laughs> so when we think about what a pussy has to endure, mm -hmm. like pussies are fucking tough. To push out a kid, that's fucking like push it. <laughs> Baby ain't coming out my <laughs> Aretha. All right, what I'm saying? <laughs> like let's think about that. So how is pussy? A term for weak. Okay, when well you pull it like that, <laughs> well, if, I never thought about it like that. It was just, uh, you know, that's how I was raised, you know. Right. That's what usually people would say it would be soft. Right. How, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 20. So you're part of Gen Z or Alpha. I don't like I don't like associating myself with Gen yeah, Z. Yeah, that, that's fine. But <laughs> mathematically, you're part of Gen <laughs> Z. Like, all right. I so guess. I'm a millennial. Your generation is supposed to be better than my generation because that's how I that's how I'm able to gauge if my generation did well because mm -hmm. every generation that follows the pre the previous generation should be better. Mm -hmm. If they're not, that is on the, that is on the previous generation, mm -hmm. not the one that succeeded it, or, mm -hmm. or I should say preceded it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for pussy to still be a term <laughs> for Gen Z as weakness is so <laughs> fucking nuts to me. That is so fucking nuts. It's like, why are we still using that like as a term mm -hmm. of weakness? And like you said, you never, you never thought I about never it. I never thought but, about it like that right. before. But if we just stop and think about it. <laughs> it makes no fucking sense. No, it don't. Like, we're, I'm pretty sure you heard before people say things like, oh, the balls on you. That person got big balls right there. Oh, yeah. Who wants big balls? <laughs> <laughs> no one. <laughs> right. I feel that. Little dick motherfuckers mm -hmm. are the ones who made up big balls because they probably did have big balls. They didn't have, you know, they mm -hmm. weren't equipped in other places. And so they decided, hey, we're going to use this as bravery, right? But mm -hmm. like, why are we continuing people's insecurities? <laughs> you got a point. <laughs> I personally like to say people mm -hmm. are balls. Mm. You're nothing but weak, saggy, mm. smelly balls. <laughs> You know, another thing I like to say when I say people are useless, I like to say that they're mm -hmm. as useless as men nipples. What? Oh, yeah, that is pretty useless. Right. So like, what's the whole point of men's nipples? <laughs> it, just so it doesn't look weird not to have them, right? <laughs> if, if we didn't have nipples, that would look mm -hmm. very weird. Even though, I guess, what is we all start out as female in the womb or yeah. whatever, then develop certain things, and mm -hmm. things, I'm not a scientist, but... Yeah, yeah. So on this episode, the first episode of Brother Kid didn't introduce this show at all, didn't tell people what's happening, but hey, mm -hmm. you know, you know. Let's try to call people out a little bit more when, it, when we're call, saying certain people are mm -hmm. pussy and certain people are have balls. Mm, but I don't like that word try, though. Let's get rid of the word try. I dig that. <laughs> well, I, I'm also the real of this. It's, it's like... Mm. Well, so what? So what would you say? I would just say, let's do it. I like that. Let's do it. All right, but please continue on. Continue on with the personal training and stuff. Yeah, the uh, journey. <laughs> like at first, you wasn't doing legs because you were just weak, saggy, yeah, I just smelly weak balls. Minded. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like it was painful. I didn't like it, so I skipped them. But everybody was focusing on my abs. So once COVID came out, I graduated from high school. I was just like, I posted on my story. It's like, everybody was telling me, whoa, you got shredded during the holiday. Uh, not holiday, but during COVID. Like, how do I get like that? How do I get like you? How do I get like this? Like, I'll get like lots of people just telling me, how can I be like you? How can I get that shredded? How can I do this? How can I do that? And I was just like, I was like, I tried to give them, no. I gave them what I did, but it's just like, they weren't really following it. Right. And per se, it's just like during COVID, I did nothing but research, especially with um, how to train, except for legs, with how to train, how to eat, what we're counting calories, how to lose fat, how to build muscle effectively. 
and how to do it all properly. So I did nothing but research during COVID. Like I was like a gym nerd. Like at the time I was, that's the only thing I did was just read studies. It was like, it sounds boring, but. But I'll, still skip legs. Still skip legs. So you ignored things. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. every, everywhere you researched that anyone who had any kind of credibility mm -hmm. to them said, mm -hmm. do legs. Exactly. And so you feel like what, but you still didn't. I still didn't, but after COVID, after everything was released, then I started training legs. Because if you're at home with a dumbbell, there's not really much you can do besides just a squat, maybe an RDL, a deadlift. But you can't really do that much to train legs. What's an RDL? So RDL is like a Romanian deadlift. So instead of like, you know how you do like a regular deadlift? You want mm -hmm. me to show? No, no, no. We don't need to do that. They can, they, can, they can Google it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but, but for listening purposes, you can, you can say, so what is it? So Romanian deadlift more so legs spread it out wider? So Romanian deadlift is like a regular deadlift, but instead of like, you know, when you get to the top, you hold it and you usually drop it. Yeah. So you control it on the way down. That way you get to work more on your back and work, work more on your legs. Like a regular deadlift is more for like power lifters just to see like how strong they are on picking up weight from the ground. So RDLs is like more for hypertrophy, for building muscle. Got you, got you, got you. Some parts in there, I can't, never mind. No, nah, that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. I don't know, if, so you feel, hmm. getting into a little bit of the science of it, so you feel that the regular deadlift is more so for power, for power lifting is not really building up strength? I think deadlifts is a wonderful movement for building up strength, but RDLs, you get to work more on your hamstrings and your back. With deadlifts, you're just focusing on one part of the movement and it's just picking it up, and then you don't really care about bringing it down. But with RDLs, because you're controlling the weight down, you're working more of your hamstrings and your lower, not your lower back, but your back in general. It's much more effective if you're going for more hypertrophy. Got you, got you, got you. I'll be 100% honest with you. Mm -hmm. While saying that whole thing, I had squats in my head. <laughs> what? That, that whole time, I'm like, I'm picturing squats. Really? <laughs> I'm like, ah, that's funny because it's the regular squat, actually. <laughs> it's like one of the most important workouts you can do. Mm -hmm. I've always learned. But you, I'm glad you are saying that about the deadlift because there is great debate about it if the regular deadlift, if it's um, if it does more harm than good. Mm. Because it is, it, you know, people do recognize it if done correctly. It's a great workout, but it's very easy for one to hurt themselves if you do one thing incorrectly. Because mm. there is several check marks you have to hit while mm. doing it, while doing the proper deadlift. Mm. I think the problem with deadlift is just there's way too many ego lifters out there. I just think that's the case. Because deadlift is a safe movement if you know how to do it right. But I feel... All things people lift is ego. And that, and Why do you say that? Be, because people, I people are very conscious of others looking at them in the gym. Not, I'm not mm. talking about those who, when we're talking about, like, let's say, the elite people, mm -hmm. or uh, those who have great focus in the gym. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Majority of people in the gym, mm. and people are lifting more than they should be lifting. Mm. And why it's highlighted more when it comes to deadlifts is mm. how easy it, it how easy it is to hurt yourself. It's mm. like it's more easy to hurt yourself doing deadlifts than it is say doing um, leg press. I feel mm. leg press to is the most ego-driven one. Oh, 100%. I ain't gonna even argue with that. <laughs> I ain't gonna argue with that. Because that is not in, even in my workout cycle. Like, I threw that out years ago. Mm -mm. And I'm like, there's way better ways to hit your quads and your hamstrings than doing leg press. Like, I, I see someone I know throwing up, like, on their social media is throwing up like 600 on their uh, <laughs> leg press. And I thought to myself, when I was just looked at her and everything, I was like, 
there are so many other things you should be putting time into mm -hmm. your body than leg press. Now, that's why I feel about the leg press. Mm -hmm. I know we're bouncing around a little bit because we're still uh -huh. talking about your journey and everything, but yeah. I do want to know your feelings on leg press. Okay, leg press, I ain't gonna lie. I cannot disagree with you at all. <laughs> I can't disagree with you at all. Like, I think the leg press, it can be a great exercise. If you do it right, you go slow on the way down and stuff like that, but there's just so many better options. You got lunges, you got Bulgarians, you got squats. Squats, I think, is like the best leg exercise that's out there. But I see so many people with the leg press, like they got like 10 plates on each side and they go down like half, like not even half, like a quarter on the way down. <laughs> and they brag about that on their Instagrams. Like this is one guy I know in particular, I'm not gonna say no names, cause you know, we gotta get this respectful, of course. I mean, I don't have to. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm still not gonna say no names. <laughs> it's all up to you. I don't give a fuck. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> like I am. Uh, I'm not gonna say no names, but it's just like if you're really bragging about your leg press, like that's kind of sad. Cause leg press, you just you just pushing it up and down. Like people that usually like do like six plates on each side, ten plates on each side, can't even squat more than three plates on the squat. And it's just like they're always three ego driven a lot about to squat. it. Oh, 100%. 100%. But if you're bragging about doing 10, right. uh, 10 plates on each side, what is that? Right. Well, I would even challenge them a little bit more and say, and wonder how much are they, are they doing the hack squat for? Oh, Lord. Right? That's just a different animal. Right. Because you, you, to really hit your quads, like the hack squat, I feel, is where to go. Mm -hmm. it, now, some lunges and all that. Like there are a bunch of good ways to hit your quads, mm -hmm. but my two of my favorite ways is the elliptical mm -hmm. and the hack squat. Mm. How how's your hack squat game? Man, I ain't gonna lie, I can't skip hack squat. I love hack squats. Uh, but recently, though, I've been sticking with more lunges and Bulgarians. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to I'm not trying. I avoid the machines as much as possible. Same. Just because it's like, what's the point of building all these big muscles if you can't even use them outside? Because it, it, it also isn't like it's restricted movement. Exactly. Because we're not all built the same. Now, the thing is about the hat squat, though, mm -hmm. since it's, it's focusing on just your quads, mm -hmm. it's your feet placement. It's not restricting anything. Am I incorrect on that? So, wait, can you repeat that one more time? So, with the hat squat. Mm hmm since it's focusing on your quads, mm -hmm. it's more so how you're placing your feet. Mm. Well, well no, I mean, when I say more so how you're placing your feet, mm -hmm. it's, it's not restricting how you're placing your feet, mm. meaning though it's not restricting where you, your quads getting hit. Mm. It's not making it one size fit all. Say like that one, uh, what do you call the squat machine? that people use as body squats at LA Fitness? Is it just called a squat machine? Or what, the Smith machine? Is that what it is, the one that they full? That yes. That I dumbass. Hate, I hate that thing. <laughs> right, so it's not like that one, right? Because uh -huh. I wasn't sure if you should explain it or I should explain it. Okay, so with the Smith machine, what I don't like about it is that you have to get fixed to the machine, per se. And it's just like, for you to squat with the Smith machine, you have to squat a certain way to the point where it's just like it feels unnatural it feels uncomfortable but with the hack squat it's like doing a regular squat with just back support if that makes any sense true it's like more natural right and so that and so that's the point i'm trying to make that you put much more elegant than i did and it's not restricting any kind of uh movement and it's not making it a one size fit all like the smith machine does mm -hmm. by the way people don't do the Smith machine for anything. That <laughs> you look silly. Don't do bench press <laughs> on the Smith machine. You, that machine shouldn't exist. No, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Let's talk. I, I, see, I love this. I love bouncing around a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know how the people are gonna feel about it, but hey, feel it the way they feel. This is how the conversation happens. Mm -hmm. What are machines you hate? Hmm. All right. So besides the leg press and besides the Smith machine, this is one machine. Any ab machine. I hate it. I hate all ab machines. <laughs> I don't like them. 
They're all dumb. Uh, they're all horrible. Especially that one where you go like side to side like this. Like, I don't know. It's they're like the stupidest thing. They're trying to hit their obliques and it's like, you're not really doing that. And on top of that, it's... Mm -hmm. I come no one who hits the app machine has apps. <laughs> <laughs> That should be your clue that maybe. I not. never thought about it like that before. I never thought about it like that before. Never seen them have apps. It's like, what are you doing? And sometimes we do things that we learn too are not the smartest. Um, even that one app workout I was doing, right? Mm -hmm. I had to stop doing that. Really? Like yeah. the one where you're just going, going up all the way, pushing yeah. your feet up? What happened? <laughs> Basically, tore my abdominal muscle because it's like all that restriction is all your mm. weight and everything, and it's just like because it's so fucking difficult uh -huh. to do. And I was so fucking great at it. It's like mm. and, and it added so much more. But I I haven't really done an ab workout seriously in about three months. R really? Yeah, because of because it's like every now and then, like my abs would cramp up. Mm. And I I don't want to tear anything to a point where I can't uh, work out because it's like I can when lifting mm -hmm. I have knowledge enough knowledge to know one of the best way to work out your core is by lifting weights. Yep. So a lot of people sometimes they ask me how how do you get a core that way? Like mm -hmm. I remember once I'm working out a guy asked me hey, how do you get a, how do you get your abs like that? And I said by lifting weights. The look of disappointment <laughs> in his face. <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> so it leads me to how do you deal with people as a trainer? How do you deal with people expecting the magic beans? Like magic beans, they just want the shortcut to what their dream body is? It's because I feel Jeff Jeff Cavalier has like the best slogan when it comes to that. Because mm -hmm. he wanna look like an athlete, gotta train like an athlete. Exactly. There's there's no way to work around it. And I, so, but me, I'm just a guy who mm -hmm. lifts ways to battle depression and stay mm. focused on things and to take my mind off of the arts. Mm. Now, you are a person to tra who also trains people mm -hmm. who has to have great patience. Mm. Talk about patience. And help. Stroke people's egos because mm. I at times see. Well, you don't have to do that. That's mm -hmm. if you done that's great because I've seen many trainers mm -hmm. at times let their the people that they're training sit in between their sets. Huh? Yeah. Like sit between their sets. Like yeah, they do like so. The person, their client, would lift, mm -hmm. and then in the rest. They're mm -hmm. just sitting down until it's time to lift again. Mm. And I'm like, hey, what the fuck's the point of that? No. <laughs> be moving. <laughs> you got to be moving. You can't be sitting down. Got to keep your heart rate up. Mm -hmm. Especially, too, if, like, let's face it, most people who have trainers, like, some people who have trainers are elite people, mm -hmm. and they do still get trainers. Like, anyone at any level mm -hmm. can be a person that has a trainer. But... Most people who have the trainers, people who are trying to get to certain things and get to certain goals, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, all right, you are not an Olympic a Olympic athlete. You mm -hmm. can't sit down in between sets and mm -hmm. take three to four minutes. Mm -mm. So how do you deal with that? Well, what I deal with it is just I simply just tell them the truth on it, cause like it's great having dreams, it's great chasing a goal, but if you're trying to like I got this one story where this one guy he came up to me is like I want to look like Brad Pitt. Dude, why do so many people say that? Why do so many people say, like, Rob Macklin said that once where he, mm -hmm. when he got super fit, when his trainer, he went to his trainer, he was like, hey, and his trainer said, before you say anything, I can't make you look like Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. I can make you be fit, but you're not going to look like Brad Pitt. I can't do anything about your face. <laughs> So you got the Brad Pitt thing before. From Brad Pitt from Fight Club, right? Yes, Brad Pitt from Fight Club. Like, I just think it's just like, he has a he has an amazing physique. A lot of people aspire to look like him, but they don't know like how much time you have to put into that. 
not only how much time, like how much dedication, how hard you have to train, you have to eat right, sleep right. There's a lot of variety that goes in there that people just don't know about. And, you know, there's a little magics that sometimes goes in there. So no one really talks about that, though. I was very naive about that. Mm. I It was never even a thought of mine at LA Fitness when I was, until a couple of years ago, I was working out and I was talking, oh. to, talking to a guy mm -hmm. and he said, yeah, I do this, I do that. And do pretty fit and goes, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I'm clean. And he mm. said that in a way like, I said, what? Mm. And then I was like, wait, people are in here juicing? Mm. You'd be surprised how often that is. And because I, I couldn't understand why would people be juicing if you're not, I, like, I, don't, I don't get that. Mm. Like, it, it's mainly come down to three reasons. The one reason why they're Jews is because they tried every they thought they tried everything. They thought they trained right, eat right, sleep right, gave it enough time, and they think that's the limit. So they do the juice to enhance their physique, if that makes any sense. Like more uh, whipped cream on the cake. So I've never even met somebody that I knew who was juicing that to my knowledge, right? Mm. Now, a friend of mine, she once uh <laughs> I was working out with a friend. Mm -hmm. And she, we, we, were, we were lifting, mm -hmm. and I watched her do 15 reps of something. Mm. And I went, it's like, wait, what are you doing? And mm -hmm. she was like, very, like, light breeze kind of stuff. And she's like, yeah. Mm. She's like, I do five sets of 15 reps. And I was like, you shouldn't be doing five sets of 15 <laughs> reps of anything. If you can do that, that means you're not lifting enough. Mm -mm. I was like eight to 10 max to being mm -hmm. like for most people, eight to 10, I'm trying to build strength and everything mm -hmm. and, or competition, whatever the fuck. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, two to four. But mm -hmm. if you're doing 15, like, I can understand at the end of your workout, like sometimes I may do 15, three sets of 15 uh, mm. face pulls, but that's a workout one can do every day. And that's building a muscle that, very difficult to build in it, right? Mm -hmm. But I was like, so who told you that? And she showed me this dude and I big body, mm. little legs. So I just referred to him as little legs. I was like, <laughs> look at little legs, motherfucker. Dorito body. <laughs> yeah. It did, but then it turned out that he was juicing. Mm. And his legs were so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he wasn't hitting the legs. And then so, but because she told me mm -hmm. like once he stopped juicing, it had dramatically just uh, decreased over time. Now, oh, yeah. the look, her, I didn't know he was juicing until like two years after she showed me the photo. Mm. So, it, and it was just two weeks ago, I'm working out and somebody kind of know, and he, he asked me, he goes, hey man, mm. you, ever, you, you ever be using Tess? Mm. It's like, the fuck is Tess? <laughs> 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 and he was like, it's like, you know, it's just like, I was just talking about TRT. And he was like, mm. yeah. I was like, nah, I don't be using TRT. Mm -hmm. And he was, nothing against TRT. People use that and stuff. And I, I totally get that. It's, um, mm -hmm. uh, hey, you're, you're at a certain age and stuff, and you're trying to get more testosterone mm -hmm. and that you can't develop it. Or maybe you've gone through a transition, so you're using TRT. Mm -hmm. Totally understand it. Me personally, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't need TRT mm -mm. at the moment. <laughs> Mm -mm. And you're 20, so mm -mm. you're still developing TR. T I mean, <laughs> you still have more. I mean, hell, your frontal lobe of your brain isn't even fully developed yet. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, I'm filled with testosterone as being a 20 year old. I'm still yeah. gonna get increased too. Yeah, which is which is great. I forget where the fuck we were at. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, um, so being real with people, and you, yeah. you, you, you don't juice. And uh, personally, myself, I'm natural. Um, what does that mean? Natural means that you're not using any compounds that uh, that alter your physique beyond its capabilities. So, for example, if you're taking like testosterone, right, you'd be taking an outside source and you'd be putting it in your body to enhance your physique that your body wouldn't be able to do naturally. So, um, what I mean by that is like you're only gaining like 50 pounds of muscle naturally and that's it because there's a limit that everybody has depending on the genetics of course and if you take testosterone you can go beyond that 50 mark you can build like 70 80 pounds of muscle would creatine be part of that 
It's a very tricky. That, see, that's where it gets a little tricky because creatine is found within red meats. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about creatine monohydrate, it's made in the lab. But I would consider it natural, personally. Do you take creatine? Oh, yes. I got you, got you, got <laughs> yes. you. Um, you said genetics. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of my favorite things to talk oh. about okay. is genetics. And um, I remember one time at the gym, you, when you found out that I was 39, well, I guess at the time, 38. Still can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> and you was like, oh, man, you got good genetics. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I was like, that's a fellow black man. I know you got mm -hmm. some other things in you, but people see you, they think Negro. But uh, <laughs> I was like, but it took me a bit. I don't think you were talking about my physique, right? You were talking about just how I look. That too, but also your physique. Uh, see, I think a lot of the genetics part is bullshit. I don't really? think it. I don't think it. I don't think it matters as much as people think it does. I think it's only now. Nah, nothing like this. I just, for what I've seen, I mm. think it only matters from five to ten percent. Mm. Now, when we're talking professional athletes. Mm. Yes, that five, five to ten percent is fucking huge. Mm -hmm. That is big. But mm -hmm. we're talking about everyday schmo. Mm. Five to ten percent is not that thing that makes you think somebody's body's unattainable. Who's doing it clean? Nothing, because you know I don't mm. even use creatine. Wow, really? Yeah. All I uh, so mines that I so, uh, I use. GNC's right at right at the moment, Way App Bulk. Well, not, not, I'm sorry. Uh, GNC's Way App Ripped. And that's because it has a little bit of caffeine in it, mm -hmm. but there's no creatine in it. And no, the other reason why I use it because it has mm. 40 grams of protein per serving. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so this is like I can get a lot of the protein that I need uh, mm -hmm. out pretty early because I only recently has I been managed have I been managing my protein intake when mm -hmm. I say only recently only the past six months what? Um, because I wasn't using getting enough protein in my body so at times my energy would be a bit more depleted than it should be well my energy would be depleted next workout and mm -hmm. I wouldn't have enough to go and then I learned I was like oh I'm not putting enough protein uh, in my body mm -hmm. because I was probably it was. It would be rare. I'd be getting eighty grams of protein in me per day. What? Yeah. You would only have eighty grams of protein a day. It'd be rare. So now my my at at minimum I'm getting at least eighty grams of protein. So what do you eat? <laughs> what do you eat? So another part about the way I work out is I uh I intermittent fast. I've been I just okay. made five years of intermittent fasting. Congratulations. And, thank you. And um. So I, I think I just made five years because I started the third week of January in 2019. Mm. Um, so I work out on an empty stomach. Oh my! And so, okay. and my right now my my eating window, well I didn't break my fast at one, but I try to have it around from 12. Well, no, it's actually from 1 p.m. to 6. Mm. So I have like a five-hour eating window. Mm. And I break my fast with a uh, with a smoothie, mm. and my smoothie has the protein in it: mm. two cups of blueberries, two mm. bananas, and a cup of um, powdered peanut butter. So okay. I'm getting around a cup. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not a, big a cup. cup of powdered peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, no. Two cups of blueberries, that's true, but okay. like two uh, teaspoons, two teaspoons oh, okay. uh, of that. And then, uh, and also what I had today, let's say I had a uh, peanut butter and honey sandwich okay. uh, to go along with it. And then I will, and then for, and I broke my smoothies in half. And so for later tonight, I'll probably do um, four to six ounces of uh, yellowfin tuna steak. Okay. And the other part of that smoothie and maybe some broccoli. I don't know. And that'd be it. That's it? Yeah. Like you ain't eating nothing else? Well, that's today. So on mm. other days, it's like I have a few cupcakes that I bake. <laughs> I eat a lot of cupcakes. No, like, what do you eat? That's about what I eat. You just eat cupcakes. Ooh, like, 
<laughs> People who know me well know that when I say things, it's, it's, it's exactly what it is. Nothing more, nothing less. So all that right. so that applies to all aspects of me. So even when those videos I made of mm -hmm. me just talking, when I was talking about oatmeal raisin cookies, and I yeah. pulled out that, I don't know if you made it along in the video, I pulled out this uh, a cheesecake cupcake and oatmeal raisin cookie crust. Mm -hmm. And I said, I eat those. I like, no, nah, I ate that that day. I ate 2.5 of those. And I eat, and those are like in 3.5 inch uh, cupcake cups. And so they're like this. This big of a cupcake? Yeah. So lately I've been only, yeah, lately I've been cutting down a bit on the sugar and the butter a bit because when I got my blood work done, it said I had the cholesterol of an obese person. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mainly cook with butter. And so, uh huh. yeah, I mainly just eat around two meals and snack. Let me ask you, uh, when did you start training, like working out? I first started lifting in ninth grade in high school. So when did you get consistent with it? I had been on and off up until my most consistent time of me working out is November of 2022. So what do you mean on and off? Would you be like three months on, one month off? So I had been at the gym a year when I got back in in uh, November of 2022 because I went through, uh, like most of 2022 was battling severe depression. Oh. And then, uh, and some medical uh, uh, things, whereas like I had mm -hmm. these two rare pink eye viruses oh right down there lost an eye. Like there were like days consistently I would wake up and I wouldn't have the ability to see. And that had lasted a couple of months. Oh. Uh, How did you live? Ah, oh, man, not well. It was, that, that, that time sucked. And then it was like also going through depression oh, and like Lord. alcoholism and stuff. During that time, I wasn't drinking because I was I was taking uh, I was on antibiotics and taking eye drop steroids, which mm. I didn't even know what to think. And so yeah, wasn't fun in in severe isolation because oh. you think people with COVID had it bad for a couple of weeks. <laughs> like really? imagine not be you know. And then so like oh my, it was to the point where I had gunk and like I remember the doctor like. But at one point, I had to pry my eye open and put tweezers in it to like pull this, yeah, gunk off my fucking eyeballs. Was it like this? Is? Nah, I wasn't like this, like oh. a, a, um, a pomegranate seed. Oh my! Yeah, this had to be painful, huh? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. One time I had to do it myself with a Q-tip, and it's like it's a crazy thing. Look at a Q-tip that has blood on it from your fucking eyeball. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so mm. they, they say that year I was out of it, but prior to that, like in in twenty eighteen, I in, in some of twenty seventeen, I was pretty in the gym pretty consistently. Okay. And then so before I started intermittent fasting, I had a good routine, and mm. I was around two thirty, mm. and I felt real good, mm. and I thought to myself I couldn't get to a certain weight. Mm. But I was really low in energy during the afternoon. Mm. And then so I was looking at it in ways to get more energy. And I came mm. across intermittent fasting because I heard of it before. I was like, God, oh, this um, Terry Crews was talking about. It. I was like, God, oh, this mm. is crazy Hollywood shit. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly, that guy. And then so I was like, hey, let me give this a try. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's like the third week of January. And I went from like two, was that the time, 225. Mm -hmm. And from the third week of January to April 1st, or mm -hmm. May 1st, something like that, I dropped like uh, 40 pounds. Whoa. And um, and I was able to keep it off mm. up until like the pandemic. And still, mm. like I still was working out during the pandemic and everything mm -hmm. while working uh, on sets and off sets. So I kept up. Mm. I wasn't working like I was pre-pandemic because of gyms and stuff, mm -hmm. but still staying pretty consistent. But then mm. I was, I, I, towards the end of 2021, I start feeling myself being burnt out mm. from work and other things and other trauma that I hadn't dealt with and mm. was bearing. And then so, yeah, and then, then the downslide happened. Oh my. And then so when I re-entered the gym, uh, in October, mm. but really start making the change in lifestyle change when it comes to this alcohol, the way I treated my mental health, mm. putting myself back into uh, med uh, meditation 
and mm. putting myself into um, therapy. Mm. Uh, in no so November was when I was in the gym with a different kind of mindset. But at that mm. time, I was 213, 215. Mm. And then I had um, about time, again, April dropped back around. It was like 188. Mm. And, and so, like, yeah, around 2023, I wound up being in, like, the best shape of my life. Mm. And so, uh, so, yeah. So before, like, in 2017, 2018, would you say that's when you were all-time biggest? My all-time biggest was probably while I was in college at one point. Because when I got the military, I was too old. I got the military in 2007. Oh, okay. And in the military, I got up to, like, a, I went from 155 when I got into 190, uh, unhealthy. Mm. And then one time I got... It's like in 06, I got really sick. I had a bad, bad stomach virus for a couple of oh weeks. My. And I dropped like 20 pounds. Mm. And so I just went back in the gym and I got really in shape. What was your diet like back then before the, all the intermittent fasting? I didn't eat. <sighs> it's been a minute, so it could be. Right. <laughs> no, 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 no. So um, there are things where. I'm, it was 2010 when I gave up uh, red meat and pork. Mm, why is that? Uh, I didn't like the idea of how long it took for your body to process red meat, especially when it came to beef. Like, mm. was it 32 hours? And then the amount of sodium that was in, uh, that's in pork. Now, mm. I've reintroduced about six, six to eight months ago, I reintroduced uh, both to my body. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, so it what was it 2015 is when I gave up uh, milk cow milk. Mm. I just woke up one day. I was like, I'm done with this. Mm. And um, do you think milk is for babies? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> milk is for babies. No, no, no. Uh, cow's milk is for cows' babies. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's made for a calf. It like mm -hmm. it has the vitamins and nutrients for a fucking cow. Yeah. Not for a human. <laughs> That's it's, it's overdoing it. This mm. is what leads to a lot of uh, medical issues for for people, right? Mm. Um, but my, but I didn't eat as many sweets back then. Mm. I just wasn't um, at one point, like in college, as active. Because one time I got up to like two forty, two fifty. But the way two forty, two fifty looked on me was no, it was no? very deceiving. Really? Yeah, like it didn't look like it did on other people because it's like I naturally do have big legs, mm. and it's like so much of that weight will go into that. Mm. But um, but even like when I got out of college, I was two, I was two zero five, mm. and because I was in the gym consistently. So this is what I mean mm. in in and out of the gym. Like I'll be in six to eight months at a time, then out. Like I had never did just a full year in the gym mm. until last year mm. where there were no interruptions. So it sounds like you like you build your foundation back over there, correct? When you're eating like being like consistent here and then being off consistent, consistent here and being off consistent, correct? But my, my food didn't change like the way mm -hmm. I ate. It was just how how active I was mm. in the in the gym. Like that changed. Mm. Even when I stopped I mean, for like what kept me from damn from going way up in weight mm. when I stopped lifting mm. was intermittent fasting. Mm. Even when I would uh, drink so much, right? Because I would do mm. most of my drinking by myself, just drinking tequila, chilling at the house, drinking tequila, mm. and um, get drunk by myself mm. here. Mm. And then <laughs> I'd be like, oh, gotta stop drinking. Because mm. it's outside of my window. Mm. So intermittent fasting <laughs> also saved me from like some really, really dangerous places. Still went to some dangerous places, but mm. it could have been so much worse if I wasn't intermittent fasting. If I still mm. didn't have like that discipline. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you wouldn't just say it's not only for health reasons, but it kept you out of a lot of trouble. Yeah. I mean, which your physical and mental health to me goes mm -hmm. hand in hand. One is only going to be sustainable for so long if the other is not being uh, nurtured. 
because mm. uh, you're creating this uh, this imbalance with yourself. And so there will be times in my history where I have my mental health in check, but not my physical health. Mm. And then, vi- then vice versa. Mm. Where in at the, towards the end of 2022, it was a point, I reached a point mentally mm. where it was just like, no, you have to get these things in check mm. or you ain't going to make it. Mm. And, on, and on top of that, you are becoming a danger to others. And mm. then so it was just like, all right, let me, you know. So, yeah. Mm. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot, but I get, um, personally, myself, I like intermittent fasting too, but I don't even like do it on purpose. I just like, I sometimes just forget to eat sometimes. Mm. And I notice it's like when you don't eat so much food, your focus is like dialed in. Like, I don't know if it's just a me thing or have you ever experienced that? So, what got me in, the, the person who, Put me over the edge to intermittent fast was mm-hmm. uh, George St. Pierre. Are you familiar with him? No. He is a uh, MMA fighter. Mm. And uh, while I was doing my research on intermittent fasting, mm. I came across this interview he did with uh, Joe Rogan. Mm. And he said that his, it was his trainer that got him into it. Mm. When his trainer said to him, Would you rather train like a lion that just ate or, or would you rather train like a hungry lion? Mm. Who do you think's gonna go harder? Hungry lion, right? And then so and, and so I was like, all right, let me let me try this because I had some experience before a little bit like working mm-hmm. out without eating. I noticed I was like, man, I feel like I have more energy, mm. and then it just worked so well for me. So when I started intermittent fasting, I did not expect to drop any weight. I was mm. just looking for energy, but then I burned so much fat off of muscle, mm. and I. <laughs> And then my abs show. When mm. It's like, as you may know, when it comes to abs, as you may know, as you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people do have them. Yeah. They're just covered up. With fat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I always feel mm-hmm. the thing you should start on first before focusing on doing abs workouts is burn the fat off of your stomach. Mm. And I don't feel ab workouts necessarily burns fat off of your stomach. <laughs> no, 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 no. Ab exercises do not, there you can't have spot reduce fat. I don't know where that hell came from. Because wouldn't it be kind of weird if like you ate something and then the fat went into this particular area? Yeah. <laughs> like imagine <laughs> eating a cheeseburger and just goes to your bicep and you do a bunch of bicep curls to get rid of the fat. Right. How do you, so that person that, so how do you deal with people that's, again, the guy who wants to look like Brad Pitt? But even if you say he, that guy did look good, though. No, Brad oh. Pitt looks good. <laughs> oh, that guy, okay. <laughs> so how do you guide people on the road that they should be on? Or what say, the road that they really want to be on, mm-hmm. but the road that they're on and mm-hmm. want to go on mm. <laughs> is not the right road, but they don't know that. So how do you signal them over to the right road to be on to get to the goal that they want to get? So I just tell them, I just tell them like this. I cannot train you to look like someone else, but I can train you to be the best version of yourself. I think nowadays like a lot of people just compare themselves to others without realizing it's like, there's a lot that's a play over there. For example, diet, training, sleeping, but also genetics as well. The way that they're built, muscle bellies and stuff like that. So I just tell them it's like, whatever you think about getting, get halfway there. Cause let's say for example, I have a big goal. I wanna lose 80 pounds in two months. Okay, first of all, that ain't gonna happen. (laughs) That ain't gonna happen. Like it can happen, but the way that to get over Maybe there is just like, it's not sustainable, it's not healthy. So I'll tell them like this, why don't we shoot for a smaller goal? Maybe 20 pounds or something. That's, that's more manageable, more realistic. In two months? In two months. I mean, I dropped 40 in three months, but uh, that wasn't healthy and not sustainable at all. Don't recommend it. But um, I, I tell them like this, I wake him up to reality. It's like, you will never be another person, but you can be the best version of yourself. And I could get you over there. As long as you put in the work. How do they respond to that? Some people accept it. They're like, oh, 
you're right, you know? And then some people are delusional. <laughs> delusional is like, no, I can look like Brad Pitt. They, and it's just like, they try to do everything they can, and then once they see like they can't do everything, they even try to go on like doing steroids and stuff like that, and they realize it's just like, whatever they're doing, they're never gonna look like who they think they are. But delusion can mm -hmm. be a powerful tool for somebody, because delusion can, do you think delusion can be a powerful motivator? It's not those who turn to steroids, uh -huh. but those who put an image in their head that may be unrealistic, and they use that as a driving force. So, I believe in having unrealistic goals. I believe in having that. But what I do believe also is like what you can and you can't do. Like, I'm gonna, wait a minute. So you say you believe in unrealistic goals? Yes. And you believe in what you can and cannot do. Let me elaborate. Let me elaborate. <laughs> Let me elaborate. Let's say, for example, I wanted to be. Um, let's say I wanted to put on a hundred pounds of muscle. And I had a goal, right? I train really hard. I eat right. I spent like 40 years in the gym or something like that. I'm still never going to build 100 pounds of muscle. That's just unrealistic. Even if I take steroids and stuff like that, it could happen. But why is it unrealistic again? It's unrealistic because there's limits that your body can go to. How much muscle, how, how many pounds of muscle can your body build? I know it's by case by case basis, but on average, naturally it's between thirty to fifty pounds. Got you. Like personally, myself, four years of training consistently, I started at one hundred eighteen pounds, super shredded, and then when I got back down to the, like a super shredded level, I was like one hundred fifty pounds. How tall are you? I'm like five foot two on a good day. Five foot two? <laughs> no, I was like, wait, what? Like, no, I'm, I'm, five, six, I'm five foot eight. I'm five foot eight. Got you, got you. Okay. So myself, I'm still developing. And I can still build more muscle, but every year it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, dependent on how consistent and how hard you train. So if I train really, really hard for my first year, I can build anywhere between 10 to 15 pounds. Then the second year, six to eight pounds. Next year, you get the point. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. What's your average heart rate? Rest, I'm saying, what's your average resting heart rate? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know right now. <laughs> like, uh, we could try to determine it, but I would say somewhere, if last time I tested it, I was like, what, 65, 70 or something? Yeah, that, that's your, like, your, uh, you mo no so I, I actually I didn't know much about a resting heart rate mm. until my good friend Brent Johnson. We were mm. um we were shooting this commercial. Mm. He asked me, he goes, Skylar, what's your resting heart rate? I was like, fuck, I don't know. He goes, you got Apple Watch on. Let's see. He put up the um mm. the health app. Actually, no, no, no. You did say it right. You said how many? So I have between I believe last time was like sixty five to seventy beats per minute. Okay. My bad, people. I get things mixed up in my head all the damn time. And you're right, 60, 75. So he asked me what was my resting heart rate, and we looked it up through the app. I mean, you know, mm. iPhone health app and everything. And at the time, it was uh, 51. Mm. He was like, wait. He was like, holy shit. Like, you're, like, he was shocked by that. And mm -hmm. I didn't understand why he was so shocked by it, right? Because I didn't mm. know nothing about it. He was like, dude, you have a fucking uh, a resting heart rate of Michael Phelps. <laughs> And then when I looked it up, I was like, oh, uh -huh. shit. And so now mine's it's like 50 to 49 or something like that, which is uh, very unusual for someone of my age. Not really, because you got to look at your background. You've yeah. been very active. Yeah. You've been running a lot. You've been doing a lot of cardio. And the more cardio you do, the stronger your heart gets, so it doesn't have to beat as much. These, this is very true, and I'm glad you said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean <he's> just not. <laughs> so. Because in my head, I was like, hey, as an interviewer, I should be directing you more towards that stuff. But hey, you walked right into that. And so, mm -hmm. good. So, I, I like talking about this, though, man. Mm -hmm. It's let's talk about cardio a little bit. Yeah. I'm big on cardio. Oh, 100%. I, I go hard on the elliptical. And mm -hmm. I don't understand why more people don't go hard on the elliptical. I don't understand why mm. spins, spin. Bikes are so fucking popular when there's an elliptical out there. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about cardio and what do you do about cardio for yourself? Personally, I think cardio is the best thing out there because, you know, muscles are great, 
but if you gotta look in the long term, what you gotta really care about is your heart health. And the only way to really train that is through doing cardio, especially in more higher intensity levels. Because when you get older, you're gonna start losing muscle and stuff, but the one thing you're gonna have is your heart. So you really have to take care of it. And myself personally, like, you know, like, you know, I have a background history of like my family, like high blood pressure, um, heart problems, artery clogged. And when you hear about that, like if you do cardio every single day, like at least like 150 minutes a week minimum, you can decrease the chances of you getting clogged arteries. So it's just like, I don't want to get that when I get older. So I might as well just start now because once it starts, you can't really reverse it. Glad that you shared, shared that. I am also mm -hmm. a person who's very mindful when, uh, when it comes to that because of like my own family history. I mean, again, my older brother died at 35 years old from a heart attack. Didn't even know he was having a heart attack when Ooh. it happened. And then- uh, Was he out of shape? Yes. Um, like how out of shape are we talking? I don't know how much he weighed. It wasn't, he was also active. It wasn't like he was in the gym like that either. Mm. But you know, had a job, worked pretty often, moved around a lot, you know, but- um, was in, was an was an overweight person, mm. and so for that that was 2016, mm -hmm. and during that time, me, I was in the gym, mm -hmm. and so of course, it, like it just helped me be more mindful of that. Mm -hmm. But I fell in love with the elliptical when I was in the military because mm. uh, there was elliptical on the ship, and so we were overseas mm -hmm. and stuff, and I'd be running on that. And I can just feel it more. And it, mm. again, like like today, as a warm up, it's mm -hmm. like I did um, say fifteen minutes on the elliptical with a, a three minute cool down. That's typically around like um, around three hundred calories I burn for, for, for something like that. Mm -hmm. And it, then I lift. Mm. Burning like in, around three hundred. <sighs> Sometimes I look over and I see what people, how many calories they burn in like an hour mm. from running. It ain't, it ain't that. And so I, so what do you do for cardio? Oh, uh, personally for cardio, I like, uh, I do, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie, I love the treadmill. I love the treadmill. <laughs> I love the treadmill, but I'll put it at a max incline and I'll put it at a speed where I'm not like slacking. I'm like really pushing myself like 4.0 speed. 3.5 speed. I love doing the treadmill. I also love doing the elliptical because like it's kind of boring just like walking like this. Rather it's like you're moving your whole body and in fact you burn more calories on an elliptical because you're moving your arms as well as your legs. See I like you said that I like that you talked about like the speed that you put it on and mm -hmm. when you come to the um, the treadmill in that uh, in, the in, in the incline because mm -hmm. at times it's Steve Kerr was once talking about this about basketball and about practicing. Mm -hmm. It's like it's, not, it's just not about the time you put in; it's about what you're doing with that time. Mm -hmm. Like for me, so when I run on the elliptical, I start out at right now. Actually, I, I, I went back, but for right now, I'm back down to starting out at resistance level 15. Mm. And then after the one minute mark, I go up one. After the mm -hmm. two minute mark, I go up one. Then after that, every two minutes, I go up another. Mm -hmm. And so that means right now I'm ending it on resistant level 23. Wow. Uh, before I was ending it on, like I was started at 17 and mm -hmm. I would end it at re resistant level 25 mm -hmm. um, in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so that means it's because once I get to 14, that's when it goes up to 25. And 25 on the Olympic is like, that's the max you can go anyway. Mm -hmm. The reason why I stopped that because I was like, okay, I'm. I'm exerting myself too much mm -hmm. before my workout and just where I'm at right now. So mm -hmm. like, hey, let me build myself back up before I can start out at 17 mm -hmm. again. Um, but so, and I'm running at the speed level I, I stay at is like 4.1 to 4.3. Oh, nice. So it's, a, so it's like high speed, high resistance mm -hmm. to again, to like maximize that. And I have to do that before I lift. Mm. If I do, if I don't do it in lift, I, I have a terrible workout. Mm. I gotta sweat. Mm. I, I just, I, I know, like, how do you feel about that? Like, people who burn X amount of calories before they lift? Um, personally, I just like doing like five to 10 minutes of cardio just so I can get my body warmed up, so I can use most of my energy for my workouts. 
But some people are different. They like, as you said, like they love sweating before they go on their workouts. So I think it's just a feeling base based on each person. And I think whatever you like doing, keep doing it. Dig that. How long do you live for? <laughs> so I, when I first started, I was kind of crazy with it. Like I think one time, me and my friend, we hit a leg day. We did there for like eight hours. <laughs> 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 I was making up all the time. I was skipping legs. <laughs> and we stayed there for a good eight hours just, just going crazy on legs. But I noticed it's just like when you're trying to build muscle, it's not an endurance-based event. The only mm. thing you in there for is to give your body a reason to, uh, to build on muscle and get the hell out. That, that's what it is. So right now I only work out maybe for an hour and a half, two hours maximum. Two hours maximum if I'm talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. Me, I, I do, uh, I live for 40 to 60 minutes. Is it active lifting? Yes. Okay. So if I, um, if I hit 60 minutes mm -hmm. while I'm lifting, I haven't did everything that I, I tend, I plan to do, I stop. Mm. It, um, and so now my, I only lift, like most days, I just lift for 40 minutes. Mm. So, because I'm big about recovery mm -hmm. and there's only so much time too that I can put in because it's like, I do dynamic stretches before I do anything, mm -hmm. then 15 minutes on the, then 15 minutes, but well, I guess total 18 minutes on the elliptical, mm -hmm. then 40 minutes uh, lifting, 40 to 60 minutes, then 22 minutes ice, isolation stretches afterwards mm -hmm. and 20 to 23 minutes in the sauna. And then of course they come down showering and then. So you went to the gym for almost an hour and a half, two minutes. Well, I said, how long do you lift for? Oh, how long do you lift for? Yeah, that's pretty much it. What? An hour or two. Depends if I talk to people. Right. So I said, I only lift for 40 minutes. Oh, okay, okay. See, not all the other things that go around it, because mm. once I'm done lifting, it's all recovery mm. until I'm lifting again. Mm. How do you go about your recovery process? Uh, dynamic stretches. Cardio first. Dynamic stretches, lifting, static stretches, cardio. No, cardio, then static stretches. Right. So when I say isolated stretches, I mean static stretching. Yeah. Yeah. And um, why that mm -hmm. is? Why static stretching after, not before? And dy why dynamic stretching before? Because dynamic stretching, you always want to be moving uh, during your movements. Just because with static stretching, the whole point of stretching is to get like your body like used to the movement of what you're doing. And if you, especially if you stretch out when you're cold, your chances of getting injured is a lot higher. So after your workout, you're pretty warm, so your muscles are very flexible. When you first start off, they're pretty much stiff. That's why you hear people that say when they go cold inside the gym, their chances of getting injured is a lot higher. But what about people who uh, do the cold plunge before they work out? You do a cold plunge before you work out? So you, the, the idea is to do the cold plunge before the workout and you do the sauna after. Uh, personally? I never heard about that one before. Uh, you, should, you should look into it. So the other yeah. stuff, I'm in, I'm in complete align with you, and yeah. that's the reason why I do it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to hear you say it for the people, since you're the person. You know, you're, you're the expert. <laughs> I'm not. Um, but... uh, let me let me just let me just clear out one thing. Let me clear out one thing. I may know a lot of knowledge with personal training. I might know a lot of knowledge about how the human body works, but I don't know everything. Science, every the body. Our understanding about the body is always changing. So I don't know everything. The only thing I can say is what I believe in, what my opinions are. And, you know, sometimes, you know, right now what I'm saying could be right, but maybe five to ten years there may be, space, uh, there may be some science that might be contradicting what I say. So it's just like, for example, uh, I, I used to believe, like, it was a really big uh, popular belief that you had to have, like, five meals of protein, like 20 grams of protein every four hours to get the most anabolic response to build muscle. But now there's, like, a 2020 study that was done, now that's popping out now, where if you eat all your protein in one sitting, it doesn't really matter about building muscle and stuff like that. You'll still build nearly the same amount of muscle if you didn't spread out all your meals. So science is always changing, if that makes any sense. Right. Our people are putting science into it. Yeah. Because, take for example, the don't eat before you sleep. 
yeah. part, right? Or are you going to gain weight? It's like, <laughs> that's not what it is, actually. And the reason uh -huh. why intermittent fasting is what it is, uh -huh. is because it's allowing your 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 body time to, A, break down the food, uh -huh. but then once it's done breaking down the food, it goes into repair mode. Mm -hmm. But if, you're all, if you eat at 11 at night, mm -hmm. and then you wake up at 6 in the morning, yeah. and you eat again, you yeah. ain't really gave your body much time to repair. So it's going back into breaking down the food thing, right? Oh, yeah. It is it then so but if let's say if you eat at eleven at night and you go to sleep and you don't eat again until five PM, like mm. you're good, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean that 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 in so many ways that's also a, a good like fasting time that you gave yourself because it was like twenty hours, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's it's a funny thing. Like now that has been thrown out mm -hmm. about the like you don't really hear people say too too much about eating late at night or um, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Mm -hmm. So breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Okay. You used to hear that all the time. Yeah. This is true, but that's. We have to remember that that breakfast means breakfast. Whatever, I always fuck up when saying that word. Um, break fast. That's literally in the name. <laughs> right. Ali, she learned that last year. I was talking to my auntie on the phone. She said that. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so yes, how we break our fast is important, but yeah. it doesn't mean you have to eat it in the morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. It can be when you break your fast. It can be any time. Mm -hmm. So after your after your static stretching. Mm -hmm. What do you do? After static stretching, I just go home. You don't hit the sauna? Uh, I know sauna. Okay. So personally, myself, I don't like using the LA Fitness Sauna for several reasons. Uh, I mean, what? You didn't like, you didn't, like Today, I was in the sauna. It was lovely. I sat down. There was two people dancing. One guy <laughs> dancing in front of, of, of the door, literally shaking his ass. <laughs> In a very uncomfortable way, <laughs> and then there's another dude singing, and another person jumping up and down in excitement. Like, what's not to love about that sauna? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind of world you living in, but <laughs> it was a fucking nightmare, people. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! But well, you know, personally, if you want to do that, I'm not gonna say nothing. You know, you do you, but uh, like the LA Fitness sauna, I don't really like it. Per yeah. Se. But I think people get confused with the sauna. They think it's just like, just because you're sweating more, you're burning more fat, which really isn't true. It's more of like you're recovering. You're recovering your muscles after your workout. It's very relaxing. Right. That's the whole point of a sauna. And also you could say it's sweating, detoxifying the body. You could say that. You could say that. But in terms of burning fat, absolutely not. No. Right. So I'm talking about for recovery reasons. So the sauna is a good tool to use for... Uh, recovery for 100% right uh, muscle repairments but you skip it because of the uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the LA fitness one I'm sorry let me tell you well, something. I'm not sorry but you know I tell people this all the time and they at times get a little bit surprised by it, but I do not like the gym no <laughs> it, no <laughs> I don't I, people such as yourself and so many other people that I talk to do not like the gym actually mm -hmm. it's the, but it's the results yeah. that I love. Yeah, I love the results more than I dislike the gym. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the sauna. Like, mm -hmm. not all the time I have to deal. Today was a very weird day in the sauna. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what the hell's happening <laughs> today. <laughs> not the weirdest day, though, in the sauna I've seen. Mm -hmm. But still. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right. So... I mean, you're 20 years old, but still, yeah. you should be hitting the sauna. But, yeah. but you know, you I know hit your saunas at other LA fitnesses, but <laughs> not the one, the one that we go to. Uh, uh, well, yes, we go to a very unique <laughs> LA fitness. It's in Hollywood, and it's what one would expect at a Hollywood LA fitness. But you know, there's never a dull uh, moment there. No, no. No, <laughs> no. There's been like everything that's bad. There's been some stuff that I cannot say over here. <laughs> like I will get canceled if I were to say it. <laughs> it's uh, uh, people do love to dance at LA Fitness, though. Oh, they love to do more than just dancing. 
And they love to dance in areas where there isn't a dance floor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's not even in the sauna. It's not even in the men's locker room. It's nah. everywhere. And now I'm talking about where you're just like, we're lifting weights right here. <laughs> you're just dancing. Like, they're going like this. <laughs> like, no disrespect. I love dancers and everything. But it's just like, <laughs> I know. sometimes a, you get in the way. <laughs> there's an area for people to dance at. <laughs> and, and, and those people who dance in that area are dancing beautifully, which yes. is dope, right? Y'all, yeah. Great. But those other people, <laughs> it's like, y'all can dance in that area too. Exactly. Like, imagine trying to get a machine and you're just scared to go near him because he might hit you or something. <laughs> All kinds of fun stuff. Before I get into how you unwind, I am curious, how do you deal with unwanted attention at the gym? What do you mean by unwanted attention? By um, either people staring at you lustfully. Okay. People who are asking you things. Okay. It could possibly get a little handsy with the way they're like, oh, how do I, you know. Mm. Um, and maybe even people coming on to you. Are those ever any things that you have dealt with? And if so, how do you deal with that? Oh, yeah, 100%. No, I mean, I get compliments all the time uh, just because of my physique. You know, I don't think I have the best physique in the world, you know, but I did work hard for it. But um, I like the compliments that people give me, but there's boundaries. There's boundaries. So, like, let's say, for example, it's like, hey, man, you got a really nice body on you. Or, like, let's say, hey, man, you got really nice arms, you got really nice shoulders, you got a nice back. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Thank you. Like, I really appreciate those comments. I worked hard for it. But it gets a little weird when they start... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> start touching me and so and it's just like hey cut that shit out <laughs> so like, that's how you deal with it like how do you establish your boundary how, uh, when people are crossing a, cr right let me uh I'm gonna I got a couple of messages hold up so are there any other ways that you deal with unwanted attention Alright, so I gotta be careful with my words. So if someone flatters me like hey, like hey, what's up? Like gives me a compliment based on how my looks or my personality, I accept it, you know. I think it's really great. But there's boundaries to the point where if people are just like uncomfortably touching you or just like saying some things that are kinda a little too creepy, then you kinda have to say something about it. No, not kind of. You have to say something about it. Because if you don't, it's just going to keep on doing it. And to the point where it's just like, hey, if I can get away with this, what else can I get away with? So I'm very on my, uh, I'm very always on guard when it comes with compliments and stuff like that. Like myself, when I first, uh, when I was in high school, I never really got that many compliments. I, I was just like, I was, when I first started, I was like that shy kid that I didn't really talk with anyone. But as the years went on, started making new friends, I started opening up, being more of a person. But as of right now, I get like, I just go walk outside, get compliments all the time. Which I'm not saying that to brag or anything, but it's just like, I always hear it all the time. Which I'm not opposed to, I love it. Know that that is a, change, that is a thing that will increase as you get older. Mm -hmm. Especially if you take care of your mind and body. Mm -hmm. At 39 years old, I get more compliments than I ever get. Because mm -hmm. what about people around your age? What are, how do they look like? What's their work ethic? Oh, I don't know. I don't care about that. Exactly. No, I'm joking. Um, um, I, I was talking to my, a good friend of mine named uh, uh, Johnny Higgins. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about this. And he was saying, too, that Johnny is, fuck, I'm blanking on your age, mid-30s. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing uh, with him. And so the thing that comes with that is um, your energy that you put out when, it, when we... I feel when we keep our mental health in check mm -hmm. because it makes people can feel your energy and mm. feel more ap approachable, especially when I'm, now we're talking positive mm -hmm. attention, not the unwanted attention. Mm. I am curious, just talking gym uh, etiquette, um, women in the gym, how do you deal with Letting them know, without saying it, that you are not a creep trying to come on to them or gawking at them. How do you make sure that you're respecting their boundaries, that there isn't any 
unintentional uh, misinformation going? Give them compliments that aren't based on their looks. Uh, how do you do it? I would give them compliments. I'd be like, hey, listen, like I see you always around over here, not to be creepy or nothing, but I see you always putting in the work and you're doing amazing. So you say that. You said not to be creepy. Not to be creepy. Like, let's say, for example, if I wanted to say hi to you or something like that, I would never compliment you on your looks. Be like, hey, you have a nice ass. Like, I will never do that. Like, you'd be surprised how many guys do that. You'd be very surprised. But even when it... <laughs> I, so I am very hypersensitive to certain things where mm -hmm. it's like... When I, if I'm working on an area, right? Yeah. And there's, let's say, a mainstream media attractive woman in, in, in the same area that I'm working out in. Mm -hmm. And then let's say if she goes to a different area eventually, right? Mm -hmm. But that area she's going to mm -hmm. is the same area I have to go to next. And I'm pretty sure you de have to deal with that before. Yes. How have you dealt with those situations? Man, honestly, if I'm gonna work out over there, I will work out over there. As I'm not gonna let anyone or anything just like determine, like, do I really need to do that? I'm just like, as long as you're not being a creep about it, like staring at her, gawking at her, like, <laughs> like do not do any of that. And just like, as long as you're not following her and not making it creepy. And if you're following her everywhere that you go, yeah. that's creepy. <laughs> But if like you you both go in the same direction, you guys both go in the same uh, machine ish, then that's that's not really creepy. I don't view it as being creepy. Like I think a lot of creepiness is just like I don't really think she's thinking that. I think it's like more inside of people's minds per se. I would agree. Um, uh, I have a friend now, mm -hmm. and because of that, it yeah. was I said this actually doing her LA year one. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, it was, um, we were working out in the same area, mm -hmm. and then she left and went to work out a different area, mm -hmm. and that was the last, where she was working out at mm -hmm. was the last thing I had to do, part mm -hmm. of my workout, and so I almost skipped it, mm -hmm. and I was like, fuck it, let me go ahead and, and work out in this area, mm -hmm. and so I started to work out, and she stopped what she was doing, she walked mm -hmm. over to me, and I was like, fuck, <laughs> and then she goes, let me ask you something, I was mm -hmm. like, oh. she goes, how'd you get abs like that? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's it all went, in your mind. <laughs> it went a whole different way. And I let her know because of that, I uh -huh. actually talk to people more at the gym. Like, I bullshit yeah. with people at the gym all the time. Yeah. Um, and it was just yesterday, uh, there was a woman that I've seen pretty often at the gym. And I saw her, like, she was, she did some pull ups mm -hmm. and great form. Yeah. And then she went back to working on something else. And I stopped and I was like, hey, just to let you know, you have fantastic form mm -hmm. and you have a, a great pace yeah. and she 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 thanked me she was over the uh, like she was uh very appreciative to what i had to say and i say yeah. that pretty often uh to people no matter who who they are mm -hmm. right and i also do that um at, well before i get to this how if you see somebody doing something incorrectly do you talk to them as a personal trainer, yes, but what I do is that I don't just like try to tell them up straight up, like, hey, you're doing this wrong. Let me show you how to do this right. I'll tell them, it's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? It's just like, hey, I noticed you've been doing this. Would you like me for, uh, would you like me to show you a better way? It's not perceived as like being super straightforward, like you're doing this wrong, stop doing this, because nobody wants to be like that, because if you're pushing so much on them, they're going to be pushing you back on that. So if you invite them to like say like offer some advice instead of trying to deep throw it uh, instead of trying to deep throw it down their throats, then it's a lot uh, more uh, how do I say it? a lot more inviting. That's a wild way to put that. Wild way of putting it. What if you try, instead of trying to deep throw it down their throats? What the fuck? How did you get there? What? Nah. How, was like, that that phrase? How was that a phrase? How was that a phrase? Some people be doing like they just try to oh no hold on. There'll be some people trying to shove their ideals towards you like yeah, that. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's say it like that, all right? What the hell? <laughs> What is Gen Z saying these days? Hey, if you think I'm bad, <laughs> there's Jesus. the worst people out there. Jesus Christ! Now, how how is that received when you do when you go with that approach to people? People are very thankful for that. Like, there's this one time, there's this one girl, she was doing the lap pull down machine, but the way she was doing it was like 
all the way back. Like she's doing like a seesaw or something. People do the lap pull down. So and what I mean by back, I mean like she uh, is going like you know how you have like a little curve like this. Yeah. She's going like this all the way back, and I'm just like, okay, I need to say something, right? So I went up to her. I'm like, hey, listen, like, hey, what's your name? How how you doing? Like, I see you doing lap pull downs. Would you like me to show you a better way where you feel your back? But I always ask him first, like, hey, where do you feel it at? He was using their shoulders, their chest, their arms. I'm like, hey, let me show you how you can feel in your back. And it's much more inviting. When I show them how to do it, I coach them, like, how to do it. And then after it, they're like, oh, my God, thank you so much. And I made a lot of my good friends by just doing that. I made a lot of good friends doing that. And when, after I told her that, I went just back to my set. I wasn't trying to start a conversation or nothing. Because I'm in the gym. I want to get out. I don't want to stay there. So, and then I do my set, and then I have a guy come up to me. It's like, wow, like, I'm glad that you actually helped her out. I'm like, why didn't you tell her anything? It's just like, I didn't want to get yelled at. I didn't want to get hurt. That's a um, misconception that a lot of people have, Mm -hmm. that if you try to give people tips, that they uh, won't be responsive for. Like, oh, don't get me wrong. There are some assholes out there. I will admit that right here and now. <laughs> me too. Yeah. But I, I've given, I've given people tips. Like, especially uh-huh. if I feel like they're, they're about to hurt themselves. Yeah. Or if they're, if there's a better way to do what they are uh, doing. And I've met a lot of cool people um, mm-hmm. that way. Yeah. And there's been plenty of times where, like. I don't care what a person's gender is or anything like that. I just mm-hmm. go and I say something to a person, then I go about mm-hmm. my way. There has been some times though, <laughs> where it's like I go, it'd, be, it'd be a woman. I go and I give her some tips and stuff, and she's very thankful for it. Mm-hmm. And I just be like, okay, bye. And they just stand there like, oh, I thought he's gonna talk to me for a little bit more. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna go work out. <laughs> like I'm trying to get the fuck out of this place. Mm-hmm. But for the again, the only time I don't give. <sighs> Any friendly tips? And I, my approach too is like much like yours. I, mm-hmm. I ask them, hey, excuse me. I, I, I ask, like, can I give you a tip? And most of the time they're like, yes, because a lot of people are in the gym. They're trying, mm-hmm. they're trying. And most people, when they start working out, they're not fucking working out correctly. And even people who have been working out forever mm-hmm. are not working out correctly, Mm-mm. right? It is, and, we, and I'm constantly changing things with my form. And mm-hmm. I want people. If they see me doing something, to, mm-hmm. a, to ask me a question, right? Mm-hmm. But people who are on their phone in between their sets, I never approach them about anything except for how many more sets you got. So most, yeah. of, a lot of times it's seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, you got seven more <laughs> sets here, bro. All right. That's the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I don't want to lead you to how I may feel about this. So uh-huh. I will say this as straightforward as I can. That's not leading in any, certain, uh, any kind of way. Yeah. How do you deal with dumbass superset motherfuckers? Like, <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> elaborate, my brother. <laughs> so I'm not a fan of supersetting at mm. all as a workout. Now, sometimes I get some things that helps out and things of that sort. Yeah. sort. Real quick, before I even get to that. The people who have the dump, the the forty five plate yeah. and doing this, thinking they're hitting their obliques. Guess what? You're not doing. You're fucking obliques. You're just pushing <laughs> the fat up. That's another thing. I meant to go talk about. Mm-hmm. I was going to mention that earlier, but yeah, there's an individual mm-hmm. who supersets at the gym around the bench press area. He has. A water bottle, an orange bottle, a big bag, they're like bouncing around. He he hits things. He's like, eh, 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 eh. It's the funny thing is he lives on this block. Um, people, but he's not he's not alone. Mm-hmm. There are people at the gym who work out like that. How do you navigate around those individuals? What I do is that I always have this approach and it's like, personally, I think everybody is just like, they have their certain way of working out. You know, not one size fits all. Certain people like having supersets because they want to save some time on their workouts. Some people just like supersets because that's the way that they like doing the workouts. You know, everybody's a little different. And I have this perspective in mind. It's like, if I were in their shoes, like, and if I enjoy doing a superset, I would be kind of pissed off if someone gave me some advice. Be like, not advice. Not advice. I'm talking, but like, but people who are taking, taking up real estate. Oh, taking up real estate. I mean, like, what I say is that just be mindful in the gym. 
That's the only thing I can advise because I got some other words that I can't really say because <laughs> I'm a personal trader. But uh, but basically, it's just like, just be mindful about what other people. Myself, if someone wants to use the same machine I'm doing, I'm like, hey, like use the same machine. Like I'm resting, you might as well use it while I'm not using it. So it's just like, I'm very open with people like using machines with me so we can just both get our workouts in. But some of the people that just be like very aggressive about it, like, hey, I don't want you on here. And they're taking up like six machines. Like those people, I, I can't respect them. I, I just can't respect it. So when you, when, you're, when you come across a person like that, what do you do? I mean, what can I do? Right. What can I do? Right. Like at the end of the day, it's just I don't own this equipment more than he does. And if he wants to be an asshole with it, then let him be an asshole with it. I can just go with something else. What about people who don't wipe down after themselves or rack their weights? Let's just stay okay. on racking, ra racking weights. Okay, racking weights. Those people especially... Okay, let me just get one thing clear, all right? If you are a mother that is leg pressing 10 plates and you do not put any of the plates back, you should be ashamed of yourself. Like, seriously, if you're strong to leg press that weight, you're strong enough to put it back. Are you talking about that one guy who loads it all up and doesn't really do it or does it a little bit? I'm talking about the people, not that guy in particular. The people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys put on the knee wraps. You guys just going down a fourth of the, uh, fourth the range of the motion, barely moving an inch, and then don't even put the weights back. I, I can't respect you if you do that. And as just to add to this public service announcement, uh -huh. um, racking the weights actually is a workout. This is how you improve your grip mm -hmm. for when you are, as it say, deadlifting mm -hmm. and lifting other things. This is how you're able in pull-ups. Like some people struggle just when it comes to the grip, mm -hmm. when it comes to that. And it's just like, hey, how do you think you improve your grip? Racking weights. I mm -hmm. sometimes rack weights that are, that I had nothing to do with, just mm -hmm. just cause. A lot of this little etiquette thinking, gym etiquette, etiquette. Um, Dealing with people that rest three minutes in between mm. sets. How you feel about them? Well, I can't really say anything because I do that. <laughs> I do that sometimes, but uh, personally speaking, like it just depends on what you're doing. Like you don't know what the other person is doing. Like if you're a power lifter, you have to rest that long because the more intense you or like the more intense weight that you're doing, especially if you're going for like one or two reps, you're gonna need much more recovery so you can do it again. Then why don't you motherfuckers go to a powerlifting gym? <laughs> See, why do you just go to another gym then? <laughs> like, personally speaking, it's just like. Do you now think that y'all setting bad precedent for <laughs> other people at the gym because they see you take three to five minutes? See, here's the difference between me and other people. Right, huh? It's like, if I'm resting for three minutes and somebody needs to use that machine, I'll be like, hey, come over here. Come over here. Let me uh, let me unrack the weight for you. I'll rack it for you. Get in here and get your workout in. I'm, yeah. I'm very inviting towards mm -hmm. people. I'm not that guy that's like, hey, like you can't you can't come inside. I, I need this space. It's like, if you want to work out, work out with me. Like... I'm very open about it. Yeah, then maybe you should also go to other people <laughs> who rest about three minutes in between, three uh -huh. to five minutes, who are obviously not power lifters, and let them know <laughs> that, hey, you may have seen some other people do that, yeah. but you don't do that. Mm -hmm. Only power lifters who mm. does competitions and mm. stuff should be doing stuff like that. Do you Or do you think... Regular Joe Smo should also be taking three to five minutes. I think you should be taking as much rest as you need. That's fucking bullshit. No, I think you need to take as much rest as you need. Uh, if to you, do what? If you if you really How are you keeping hold your on, heart hold rate? On, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> if you really exerted yourself during the leg press, right? And you try oh, yeah. let, let, let's just say leg press, for example, is just the only thing in my mind, because we've been talking about the I've been saying this word like fifty times already now. But um when you're doing a leg press, you really exerted yourself. Let's say you're doing like three sets of 12. The second set, you really pushed for that 12th rep. I think you'd be really, really be, exerting, right? You'd really be exerting if yourself you, doing a leg press. <laughs> it's just an example. <laughs> you try resting for a minute. You try resting for a minute. It's, you might not be able to push yourself. I noticed that sometimes if I rest a little bit longer, I could push more in my sets. True. But How do you get to the other things, though, if you're taking so much time? 
people, you know. Especially when you're a person who's trying to build muscle the right way, develop certain things, and get a good full workout in if you're only doing a few. And, well, hold on. Let me, let me just say Or something. you're not giving your body enough time to recover because you're spending two to three hours at the gym. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about this for a second, right? It's all dependent on the person, and it's all dependent on your training. If you're training really hard, you're really exerting yourself, and, you know, a minute, minute 30 seconds is all you really need. But if you need the extra 10 to 15 seconds, maybe extra 30 seconds, then that's good. If I'm not mad at a two-minute break. Two-minute breaks are good. They're normal, right? But if you're taking a 15-minute lunch break between, between your sets, then that's a problem. I promise you, you've never seen me do two minutes. I do. <laughs> I try to keep it to forty to sixty sec, forty to sixty seconds. No, I it, never see this man wrestling. He always just moving. <laughs> like you see him, like you see him do the bench press, and he's finally done with the set. You turn your head around, you look back, and he's already doing the bench press. <laughs> like this man, I never see him rest. I never see him rest. I don't ever like to see my heart rate drop below one twelve. Yeah, but you have to remember though, like um, uh, how do I how do I explain this? Yeah, um. Why you make your muscles dance right there? I don't know. I explained this because it's heart rate, you know, my, my chest is beating and stuff like that. <laughs> but, um, you know, it just depends all on the person. No, it does. Uh, uh, for myself. Yeah. Because I'm doing, I'm, I'm always kind of, it's a weight management, muscle building thingy for me. Yeah. I, I have this thing. I say, um, I'm, I'm such a, No drop weights. Mm -hmm. No, how do I say this? But no gloves. Okay, no, I can agree with that one. No gloves. No gloves. No drop weights. Okay. Rack weights. Okay. Wipe. Wipe set. Yeah. Um, no bitch assness. Okay. I can agree with the gloves. The if you wear gloves inside the gym, I lost all respect for you. They do not increase your grip. They do not help with your calluses. They're just, no. I even wore gloves up until 2019, where um, I was working out with a friend. She said to me, she said, wait, you, working, you be working, wearing gloves? And I was like, yeah. She says, what are you doing, protecting your dainty hands? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Noel. <laughs> See, <laughs> I used to have this one client. I, I can't say his name or anything. But he used to wear gloves all the time to the gym. I was like... His name James? Don't comment. <laughs> Red hair. No, Shout out to James. No comment. No comment. I'm not going to say no names. Because <laughs> he, he, I don't know what he's talking about. But uh, Because my homie James told me once his friend, and his friend, his trainer was like, tried to get him to not work out with his gloves. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Finish telling your story. Like I was always tell we would always have arguments throughout the whole gym session. Like, why you wear gloves inside the gym? He's like, oh, it protects my hats. Makes them nice and silky smooth. I'm like, when you inside the gym and you have calluses, like that just shows how much hard work you put in there. No belts. That's the thing I forgot. Oh, hold on now. I don't do a belt. <laughs> I, I judge people harshly who wear belts. Okay, let me talk about belts. You shouldn't be wearing a belt for everything. I see a bunch of people inside the gym wearing a belt for damn bicep curls, leg press. They don't take the belt off. They wear the belt the whole the whole workout. Exactly. Like you should only be wearing a belt for your compound lifts, like your squat, deadlift, especially. Um, you can even use it for your bench if the load is that heavy. Because if you're always relying on a belt, you never really know like how to engage your core during your workouts. Like. Where's that belt that you that 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 you do? It's it's called like your natural belt. What they call that? It's called something belt. Oh, uh, what do you mean? Like I don't know. It's called like I forget. It's called something belt that we have. Um, like you mean it's an accessory or is no, it... no, no, no. It's, it, it's we we all have. It's it. Um, you brace your core. Yeah, but whatever. Fuck it. I've, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 blanking on it now. Mm -hmm. But um, I. I learned mm -hmm. that, eventually learned that the thing about those belts, mm -hmm. it's unless you're competitive lifting, yeah, are really trying to see where your max is, yeah, that you shouldn't be wearing those belts. All other situations, you should be developing that, 
you should be developing that. I don't want to say naturally, um, but for the for lack of a better term to say, just developing that naturally. Because if you're not doing that, you are restricting yourself. You are developing muscles around it incorrectly. Uh, I agree with you on that. Because I think it's just like, if you were a belt to everything, you were, I don't know how to explain this, but it's just like, I used to be super over rely on the belt. I, I used to be that one guy that would wear a belt on everything, even bicep curls. But what I've noticed is that uh, when I took a hiatus from powerlifting and stuff like that, go more bodybuilding, my coach would never tell me to put on a belt. And I'm very glad that he told me that because what I've noticed is that I was able to build up my core to be a lot stronger. And what I noticed is like, especially like if I were to pick up something outside, like in construction, it would be like, it's a lot more applicable. Where it's just like, I'll be like, hey, wait, hold a minute, hold a minute. Let me get my belt on right quick. Let me get all my lifting straps right quick. Let me get all my lifting equipment. Then let me pick up the two by four. No. But I noticed it's like, when you don't wear a belt and you actually work on your core, your lifts get so much stronger when you put on that belt, especially for your one rep maxes. All right, one rep maxes, yeah. not someone. Hi, how is fuck? I probably say high per, high per hypertrophy, high per high what? I high per per tro tro fee fee hypertrophy hypertrophy hypertrophy. Yeah, there we go. I know Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm big. I'm I'm a big no belt guy. Yeah. Like I don't own a fucking belt. Yeah. Um, I don't. You remind me of my friend Chase. Shout out to you, Chase. But uh, he's he's exactly like you on that one. Yeah. You don't need it. No, you don't. And me again, I'm not doing competitive lifting. You though mm -hmm. do competitions. Yeah. Like dudes in G-string muscle competition thingies, right? <laughs> I mean, when you say it like that, I don't want to say yes. <laughs> what the hell are they wearing then? A thong. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. what's the difference? I was gonna say posing trucks. Okay. Oh. No, listen, listen. I ain't gonna lie. The hardest part about doing those bodybuilding competitions isn't the dieting, it isn't the eating, it isn't the the, the, the sleepless nights. It's the fact that you have to have your pride. To not only show your body off, but you have to show it off in a very particular piece of garment, like a thong, pretty much. That takes real confidence to go out on stage and have like hundreds of people look at you with a thong on. And myself, my coach wanted to stand out from everybody else. So he made me put on these neon, bright ass, big ass thong. And it was just like, it got people's attention, I'm not going to lie, but it's just like... You gotta have to, you know, dull down your pride pretty much. Did you win? I won, but at what cost? <laughs> <laughs> it's all for the at what cost? It's all. That's all for that's the. That's not even the worst part either. Are those competitions fun for you? Hmm? The competitions, the bot, the um, is it called that bodybuilding competition? Yeah, bodybuilding competitions. Are those fun? It's. As, ugh, God, um, it's very fun. It's very fun, but it's a feeling I just can't explain in words. I, I, mean, I meant to say, is it, um, is it worth it? Huh? Is no, 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 not worth it. Um, and not quite thrilling. Is it, um, is it satisfying? 100%. Absolutely. Bodybuilding, I think, is a really good sport that if you're really interested in doing, make sure that, you know, you're doing it naturally, you're doing it safe. If you're not doing it naturally, make sure you be safe about it. But you put in so much work within the dieting. You put in so much work with the training. You never skip a day. You never skip a meal. You do cardio like crazy. You do all this work. And then when you finally get onto the show, it's just like... You feel like everybody's cheering your name on. Everyone's like really like happy for you because the people inside the stages, some of them want to be like you. They want to get to that shape, but they don't have the discipline. They I know mean, they don't have the discipline to get there. 
How many people are in it, in attendance at those competitions? So the one for Venice Beach, I believe it was like what, two, three hundred people. Nice. So that's a that's usually a smaller show, like but for the nationals, it can be very a lot of people over there. And have you won any of them? I've never been to a national because I'm new to bodybuilding. No, no, I'm talking about like uh, the smaller ones. Yeah, the Venice Beach one's the small one. Oh, you won it? Yeah, I won. Congratulations. I won. Uh, I won first place, and at the time I was 19 years old when I first won mine. I was won the teenager division, and then I beat the men's lightweight. Even though I was put against the middleweight, I still beat them all. I still beat them all. Judges told me. And then nice. um, for the classic physique, that one is like you do a certain different types of poses. It's a little different than bodybuilding. It's more about symmetry. It's about focusing on your shape of the body rather than just trying to put on as much muscle as possible. And that one, I got top five, but I was so happy that I got fifth place in that one. Because I was going against guys that were like, I was <coughs> going against like 10 other guys. And I'm only like 140 pounds, and these guys are somewhere between 170 to like 190. So imagine like me being like a little stick like this and getting top five over there. I don't think people who's going to be watching this are going to view you as a stick. No. And if I'm saying I'm a stick, imagine how big the people are that I'm competing against. Like 30 pounds is 30 pounds. There's a reason why there's weight caps, not height caps. Who's your coach? Your coach, that guy, um, I don't know, he's at LA Fitness. Yeah, Nick Stiletti. He's my, he was my coach, my bodybuilding coach. All right, 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 right. Because, yeah, I once seen y'all in, that, in the area, that like the stretching area or the dancing area, and y'all was all around in a circle and talking to somebody on the phone. I was like, look at this coat. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have nothing bad to say about my coach. I think Seems like a cool dude. I'm, I've he's never a spoken really to cool him. guy. I meant to shoot the shit with him at, a couple of times because mm -hmm. I'm, one time I was going to say, shit, damn it, every time I'm in here, you're in here, mm -hmm. but we're never using the same things. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be always like very um, giving with the information that he has. He's very giving about that, and he's like one of the coolest guys in the gym. He's a really cool guy. Still but... looking like a cult to me. <laughs> <laughs> that was that one time I'm in there, and I'm, I'm, doing, I'm stretching, uh -huh. and it was about 12 of y'all in this circle, and y'all was like... Uh, we didn't bring our candles. We didn't bring our hoodies. You know, we, we forgot to bring that. We left it at home. And I was like, oh, look at them. Look how dedicated they are. God, bigger sacrifice. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, how do you wind down in the evening? Wind down? Yes. What do you mean by wind down? So, first off, how, many, how much sleep do you get? I go to bed like around like 8, 9 o'clock. For how many hours? In the evening. And then I wake up like around 4 or 5 o'clock. So, right. that's like around 8 hours. How do you get yourself to sleep? So three hours before bed, I don't eat no food. Three hours before bed, I don't eat no food. Two hours before bed, I don't work. Like anything work-related, I just stop. That way my mind isn't like, oh my God, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this. That's for tomorrow, Jeremy. Not today, Jeremy. Today, Jeremy's going to go to sleep. And then one hour before bed, I get rid of all blue screens, no computer, no nothing, no phone. Especially the phones. The phones is like, I, I don't even, I put it in another room. Per se. And then uh, 30 minutes before bed, I take a nice hot shower. And by the time I'm in bed, I knock out. Because I, what I've noticed is that when you're working, especially on things that you love, like I'm an online coach, online personal trainer. And all I do all day is talk to people and help them out. I give people training forms, nutrition forms. I give them advice, check up on them. I'm really, really grinding with my job. Like, I'm very serious about it. If someone has a question, I'll literally answer within five minutes, depending on what I'm doing. One time I was driving, pulled over to the side of the road because a client had a question. I answered it right there and then. But after 8 o'clock, I'm not going to answer those questions. We, well, first off, mm -hmm. do you, you know how to turn your screen to red screen, correct? I, I did that. does not work for me. It has to be no. Uh, there's. It's a little bit more than the screen color. Oh, no, no, no. Most definitely. No, I, I get. Um, I get what you're saying. Um, but where I, that's actually where I'm going with it is, um, do you have the lights? Are are the lights in your place RGB lights? 
Like, you mean like a yellow dim, like a yellow light? No, no, no. RGB light, uh, that just means this is like uh, red, green, blue that you can hit any uh, color on the spectrum, right? And then so, uh, so your bulbs can be LED RGB lights, and so you can set all your lights to be red lights. No, I've never done that. I've heard about it, but no. Uh, after this, I sh I'll show you some stuff, and then uh, I highly recommend looking into that. Um, okay. Because for me, at I tend to go to bed around uh, 10, oh. and I'm up around like 5 or 6. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and I... Um, like, if I pass out at 10, that means I'm up at 5 or 4, 30, something like that. I tend to pass out around 11. Um, but at 7 p.m., that's when everything's in red light mode. Mm -hmm. When do you look at your phone for the first time when you wake up? So what I do, so my morning routine, I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And as soon as I wake up, I go on this one app on my phone. It's called Medito. And it's a meditating app where it guides you through meditation. And I'll do that for 30 minutes. Then You meditate for 30 minutes? I meditate for 30 minutes. That's amazing. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I want to get to an hour, though, to be honest. Nice. Like, concentrate for an hour. But like, as soon, and then as soon as I'm done meditating, I do a lot of journaling, see what I got to get through, done throughout the day, and then I'll just get straight on to work. Do you journal on an app or do you journal on? Journal on paper and pen. I, I did it on the app, did not like it. Did not like it because it was different typing it than just writing it. How quickly do you expose yourself to sunlight? As soon as possible. For how long? Uh, so at, when the sun comes up, I just open up my blinds and look there for like five minutes, not five minutes, maybe like 30 seconds. Because I know it's like, there was this one study with Andrew Huberman mm -hmm. and he was talking about it on his podcast about like as soon as you wake up, you want to be exposing yourself to sunlight because that um, helps with your circadian rhythm and helps you with um, like being more awake. And exposing as much sun as possible that yeah. is legal in your area. But mm -hmm. it's also looking through the window isn't enough. You actually have to go outside. I just look through the window because it's cold outside, man. <laughs> it's cold, man. How long would, it say, would you say it takes you to pass out once you lay in your bed? As soon as my face touches the pillow. <laughs> Cause, That's incredible. Because, like, myself, I what I've noticed, because before being an online trainer, I was, like, kind of, like, really mad at myself. Because, like, I would be, like, an in-person trainer. I didn't really have that many clients because I wasn't really taking my job seriously. And what I would do is just, like, scroll through. So I was, like, one of those, like, doom scrollers, listening to music. And it's just, like, I kind of felt like I had no purpose. And when I went to bed, I would have all this energy. It'd be, like, why am I still up? But what I've noticed is that when you have a purpose that you really want something, you really want to achieve something, and you spend so much energy and time into it, by the time you go to bed, you don't have any thoughts to think about. You're just completely gone. That's from my experience, though. And you're thinking that way at 20? I'm thinking that way at 20, because, you know. I would I I say that puts you so much so far ahead of the curve, and that's a great way to to be thinking. Really? But yes. I've um, it take, it's taken me a while to get to that point and mm. to really give into what my body is calling for in those moments. And you're hearing a lot of people who are changing the way that their morning and evening routine mm -hmm. uh, is, and and these people are more than twice your age. Mm. And who are just now coming to that point. So you starting that at now, starting that now, mm. and before your brain is even fully developed, is a is a phenomenal thing. And mm. which is another reason why I, I constantly praise Gen Z because you guys are using information in such a ph phenomenal way. Because there's so much information out there, and it's so so easy to get misinformed. And the way people are informing themselves, I get that mm -hmm. you could be, a, like, not many are doing what you are doing around your age group, mm -hmm. but no one was doing or thinking that way when I was 20. No, oh, People no. weren't meditating for 30 minutes. No, I think back in your day, it's like, uh, 
Uh, damn, I'll just make you sound old. I'm 39 years old. My age <laughs> is my age. The only, wow. only time I've ever felt a little weird about my age mm -hmm. is I was at the gym once, mm -hmm. and someone said that uh, it was me and there's a couple of dudes around, and it was like, it's, I mean, you're like, Scotty, you're old enough to be my dad. And I thought to myself, <laughs> don't call me your daddy at the gym. Like, what the hell? Is, like, another man shouldn't call another man daddy at the gym. You know who said that? <laughs> That. You motherfucker! <laughs> I know. You. That's wait, hold on, hold on. Let me let me clarify something. Man, right fuck, quick. Don't call me your let, daddy let at me, the gym. Okay, first what's of all, wrong I, with I, you? I didn't I didn't call you daddy. First of all, <laughs> I called you dad. I was yeah, like, don't call. Hold on, hey, hold on, that's hold on, so hold much on. better. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me defend Bro. myself right quick. <laughs> at first, when I saw him, right when I first saw him at the gym, I thought this I thought this guy was like 20, 20 something, like 28, 29 years old. I didn't think he was like an old man, like forty or something. Right? Yeah. So at the age of when mm -hmm. I said that, I was like 18 I like that years shot old. You too. <laughs> Go I gotta explain myself because you're making me sound like a weird ass. You know, you said this three weeks ago. <laughs> I know, wait, hold on. I did not say that three weeks ago. I was this year. I wasn't here. I wasn't here at this gym three weeks okay, ago. Okay, then it was in December. It was in December. It was Jan. It was, I promise. No, it was November, first of all. But it was not November. And <laughs> that was that, the last time I talked to you. Mind you, this is June. This we're in mid June right now. <laughs> that's not that long ago. It's January. <laughs> I mean, it's January. That's even worse. We're in January right now. So November was not that long ago. It wasn't three weeks ago. First of all, and then that other dude had to call you out on it too. He was like, "What did you just say?" <laughs> ah, first of all, it was just a joke. But technically, he's forty years old. I'm twenty. I mean, technically. When did you turn 21? <laughs> uh, well, uh, 20, um, I believe July 14. You believe Je You believe that's when your birthday is? Since you turned 21? Nah, I'm you tired, man. You believe? <laughs> nah. <laughs> July 14 is my birthday. That's hilarious. Oh, man, I do got to figure out what I'm going to do for my 40th. I got time, though. Uh, my birthday is October 26. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you got plenty of time. Yeah. Like, more than... Ten months away. I'm not thinking about my fucking birthday. Mm -mm. Not some. Never mind. I could even say that. Like you know, some of those people. Are like it's my birthday month. Or I'm like, it's a fucking mm -hmm. day of the year. Like congratulations, you made it to it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Celebrate small accomplishments, but that's a small accomplishment. That is a small accomplishment. Not a big one. <laughs> it's great to talk about these things. It's great to like, especially this time of year when mm -hmm. was it? We are releasing this at a time that. Most people quit their New Year's resolutions. Oh yes, right because it was it's three weeks. Oh yeah, people are already gone. Right next year. Right and then so it's a getting in there the attempt having the mindset good. Yeah. Right. Sticking with it, of course, mm -hmm. better, and people being easier on themselves. Yeah. Um, I'm still stuck on the thirty meditating for thirty minutes. Mm. That's incredible. I now I gotta get my my game. I'm like I've been meditating um probably longer than you've been born. Was that I started in 2013. And so <laughs> I've I in well I'm meditating for 15 minutes a day. Mm. Um I should be doing 21 minutes. I'll do 21 minutes tomorrow. Mm-hmm.